to test a VOR, we go to the test functions menu, then the navigation, and then the VOR page. This brings up our VOR test page. With all of our pages on the left hand side of the screen are the preset conditions for the test, and on the right hand side are the test functions. Down at the bottom we have our config, which we'll go into. Click the config menu. This is our configuration page for VOR. The first one is, are we going to test over the cable connection to the radio or over the antenna? In this case, we're going to stick with the antenna. I can change the frequencies from preset to channel to variable. It's currently set to preset. If I click the preset button, it brings up a pop-up that will describe what frequencies we're going to use. I'm going to stick with presets. Power, exactly the same. If I press the DBM, I can choose whether it's in millivolts or microvolts or DBM. DBM is the standard, we'll stick with DBM. And the bearing is fixed or variable. In this case, again, I'm going to leave it as fixed. So this little VOR configuration page sets up the outline specifics of the test. Go to the exit button. This takes us back to the VOR page. To select the frequency, top left, push the numbers, and this gives me our three preset frequencies. I'm going to change it to the 112.25 megahertz. Same thing for the power, I click the power, I can put a value in here of whatever I need. I'm going to stick with zero dBm. Modulation, change the modulation, anything from zero to 95%. 30 hertz is the normal modulation for a test. Go to the ident, click the off. This brings up our ident menu. The three choices are no ident, no audio, a one kilohertz continuous tone, or a Morse code. So that's my test setup. I am transmitting on 112.25 megahertz with zero dBm, 30% modulation, and the audio ident I'm going to use is the Morse code. So to run the test, push the start test button. The test is now active. Art is now generating a signal to the aircraft with the indicated bearing. You can see at the top we have the to and from selector. If I push the to, I can change very quickly to from. There is the tone delete, so I can switch the reference or the variable tones on or off. This will cause the radio to fail, and we're looking for that fail condition during the test. I can change the 30 hertz modulation at the top right, select the value, I put in whatever value I like, and enter. That changes the modulation level of the 30 hertz signals. I'll change that back to zero. The 9960 hertz modulation, exactly the same. I can call up this value and change it from zero to 30. The bearing indicator in the middle in the green. If I use the positive on the right, the plus, I can step the bearing by 10 degrees in this case. And I can take it back to zero. If I want to, I click the actual value and I can change the bearing to whatever value I like. So I've immediately gone to 180 degrees. I can call up that bearing indicator again and change it back to zero. I can put this whatever value I like, let's do 90 degrees. So we're now at a 90 degree bearing on our 112.250 megahertz. We can step the VOR indicator all the way around 360 degrees by pushing the positive or negative buttons, or by selecting any particular bearing that we'd like to. If I push this green button and take it back to zero, we're now on a zero degrees heading. If I use the auto, the VOR will scan across zero degrees all the way around to 360 degrees and back again and it will keep doing that. This means you can sweep the VOR indicator through its full range of movement, and that can be used also for troubleshooting bad connections, bad antennas, bad cables. 
To switch the auto off, you just push the auto button again. So that's how we run a VOR test. The user has complete control over all of the attributes on the left, and then the in test functions on the right hand side of the screen. Just as a reminder, you can step the bearing in a positive or negative direction very simply with the positive and negative buttons, or you can call up at any bearing that you wish to enter. The auto is a useful function which just scans the entire movement of the indicator and the radio, so it'll take it from whatever value you set at all the way 360 degrees backwards and forwards continuously. To exit the test, stop test, exit, and we're back at our navigation menu, go back on the functions menu again, and we're back on our main capability menu.